the James Webb Space Telescope just had its first look at a passionately anticipated set of targets. The atmosphere of seven Earth-sized planets circling the star TRAPPIST-1. The star is located 39 light-years away from Earth. Scientists consider these planets habitable, as they lie in or close to their star's habitable zone, where liquid water could exist. Stick around to find out what Webb discovered about these earthly planets. TRAPPIST-1 was first discovered in 1999, but was mostly forgotten until 2017, when NASA reported it hosted seven Earth-sized planets found in the host star's habitable zone. Since then, exoplanet hunters have been obsessed with TRAPPIST-1. TRAPPIST-1 is an ultra-cool red dwarf star in the Aquarius constellation. Its mass is about 9% of our Sun and a radius slightly larger than Jupiter. When the Spitzer Space Telescope mapped out the TRAPPIST-1 planetary system in 2017, it offered astronomers multiple chances to understand the formation and evolution of Earth-sized worlds orbiting a single star. The star is proportionally faint and cool, and the seven planets are snuggled closer to it than Mercury is to our Sun. The TRAPPIST-1 planets have been designated B to H, with B being the nearest to the star and H the farthest. Exoplanet hunters were particularly excited about what orbits TRAPPIST-1, rather than the star itself. The star was first sighted by the La Silla Observatory in Chile in 1999, but was later confirmed by NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope, which is now retired. The Spitzer Space Telescope study showed that the TRAPPIST-1 planets have remarkably similar densities. This study means that they could all contain about the same ratio of materials that composes most rocky planets, such as oxygen, iron, silicon, and magnesium. The JWST found all seven planets through the transit method. Scientists can't see them, as they're too tiny and faint concerning the star, and the signal from their atmosphere is more difficult to tease out. So they gaze into dips in the star's radiance created when the planets traverse in front of it. The TRAPPIST-1 data is much more complex to analyze than data gathered from larger exoplanets, including WASP-39b, a planet nearer to the size of Jupiter. In addition, magnetic disturbance in the star can also induce signals that confound the interpretation of the data. This repeated observation and the measurement of the timing of the planet's orbit enabled astronomers to estimate the mass and diameter of each planet, which was then used to calculate their density. Eric Egal, an astrophysicist at the University of Washington, led a research team to study these potentially habitable planets. The study revealed that the seven TRAPPIST-1 planets have the same densities, which makes the system quite different from ours. In contrast, Earth's iron is 32%, while theirs is 21%. This seems small, but significant on a planetary scale. In 2018, Nicole K. Lewis, an exoplanet scientist at Cornell University, co-led a team that used the Hubble Space Telescope to scan the planet's atmosphere. According to Lewis, we didn't see any signal of atmospheres, but we know that they don't have big fluffy hydrogen and helium-rich atmospheres that you might expect. Such atmospheres are associated with gas giant planets like Saturn and Jupiter. However, the Hubble Space Telescope had reached its limits and the JWST was introduced. The TRAPPIST system has long been on the JWST plan, and because we've known about it for six years, we were able to really make sure that we were observing it to the best of JWST's abilities," Lewis said. Furthermore, astronomers have spent that time learning as much as possible about the seven TRAPPIST-1 planets. In 2018, a study suggested its planets were rocky and that some could be wetter than Earth. In 2021, another study argued that they were likely rocky, although less dense than the planets in our solar system. The TRAPPIST-1 system doesn't look like our solar system, although four of the seven planets inhabit the star's habitable zone. All orbit their star so closely as Mercury orbits our Sun. Given that the star is much dimmer than our Sun, it may not affect temperatures too much, but it drastically affects the conditions of the planets. For instance, the closest planet to that star, TRAPPIST-1b, orbits its star in 1.9 Earth days. That's a very short year. A year takes 19 days on TRAPPIST-1h, the farthest of the planets. Also, all the planets are tidally locked, much like the moon to the Earth, so only one side gets daylight while the other is in complete darkness. Despite its differences from Earth and its distance to our home planet, TRAPPIST-1 remains the top exoplanet target for JWST. Proxima Centauri is believed to deserve that honor as it's located at a distance of just 4.24 light-years. Although, TRAPPIST-1 is 10 times farther, 
it holds the best probability because of its diversity of rocky planets. Lisa Kaltenegger, an astronomer at Cornell University, told Space.com that we need a transiting exoplanet. Our line of sight said to us that the TRAPPIST-1 system is perfect, and the telescopes can see its seven planets crossing the star's disk. She further commented that the nearest transiting planet would give the most looped signal, which is why TRAPPIST-1 is one of the favorite star systems astronomers can watch. The James Webb Telescope looked into the planetary system through its near-spec instrument. This instrument makes it the only telescope capable of identifying the signatures of molecules such as oxygen, carbon dioxide, and methane, which are the possible signs of life on the surface and clues to what makes up the planet's atmosphere. The JWST studies planetary atmospheres mainly by watching how they filter starlight as the planets glide in front of the star. Although the research hasn't been published yet, a conference at the James Webb Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore revealed the scientists' discussion about the telescope's initial data from its observations of TRAPPIST-1g, the second largest planet of the group. It'll probably take more observations and scanning time for researchers to discover if TRAPPIST-1g has an atmosphere, and if so, what it's made of. Bjorn Benecke, an astronomer at the University of Montreal, showed the first JWST studies of TRAPPIST-1g. The telescope was able to make out that the planet does not have a hydrogen-rich atmosphere. This research is something that the Hubble Space Telescope had confirmed earlier. Such an atmosphere would be physically tremendous, owing to its low density, so it would be relatively easy to spot. These findings could mean that the planet has a denser atmosphere, made of heavier molecules such as carbon dioxide, or even worse, no atmosphere. An international research team was the first to refine the properties of the star at the core of the system, and secondly, improved the measurements of the planet's radii. Another study offers better approximations than ever for the planet's masses. While in the fourth analysis, the team performed observations of the planet's atmosphere. The research team worked in conjunction with University of Birmingham astronomer Dr. Amori Triad. He explained that after discovering this incredible planetary system, the team was eager to know more about TRAPPIST-1. He added that thanks to their efforts, the TRAPPIST-1 planets are becoming the best studied worlds outside the solar system. In their study, the team found the seven planets are mainly made of rock, with up to 5% water, compared to our Earth's oceans, which only account for 0.02% of our planet's mass. In addition, five of the planets appear to lack an atmosphere made of helium, similar to Neptune or Uranus. This new information reinforces the belief that the seven planets of TRAPPIST-1 resemble the rocky worlds of our solar system. Furthermore, a PhD student of the University of Montreal, Olivia Lim, presented a poster with similar results for TRAPPIST-1b. Her team has been unable to tease out a signal indicating the composition of the planet's atmosphere. But, preliminary studies suggest that like TRAPPIST-1g, it doesn't have a puffy, hydrogen-rich atmosphere. LIM's team has several observations of other TRAPPIST-1 planets in hand, but it has yet to be released. So there are no huge discoveries from JWST's first look into the system. Still, be reassured by the lack of revelations in these early results as they're about the survey, that is, understanding how best to use JWST's precision and various systems. Lewis said those first observations would get us to the same level we reached with Hubble, or even more. This'll tell us how to use the instruments we want to use on JWST. She further said that it might take multiple observations, and with the expected lifespan of the JWST, we can keep revisiting and learn more. In conjunction with the University of Montreal, Lewis will study TRAPPIST-1e. She said it's the one in the middle of the habitable zone that's closest to the size of Earth. She added that the research is just about the planet's atmospheres, and there's no talk about aliens, at least for now. The University of Montreal also made observations of TRAPPIST-1d and TRAPPIST-1f. These observations will together make for a fascinating comparative sample. The TRAPPIST-1 planetary system was widely received by scientists as it holds the potential to host habitable life on these exoplanets. Proxima Centauri lacks some of the properties that TRAPPIST-1 possesses. We look forward to the continued study of both systems and all the discoveries to come.